think kind of, you know, 21st century, these stories used to be around in the 70s and the 80s. By now, we'd have solved this one. And yet on our own doorstep, you know, we expect when we saw Iraq fall and things like that and some sort of backwater countries that aren't necessarily as civilised as us, once in a while you hear a horrible story of, you know, what a zoo looks like in places that yeah. have no animal rights. But in Europe and over here, you, we are sort of assume that it's, it's all tickety-boo and sorted. Absolutely. Apparently not. Well, you would consider that we would lead the world in that kind of experience if we're going to have zoos. Yeah. I mean, but zoos themselves are very much outdated, are a victim Victorian idea anyway, introduced to the British public when the public couldn't get to other countries or we didn't have the most amazing technology that can enable us to visit wild animals in their own habitat in the most amazing way and in the most private way. So zoos really, I, in my opinion, are completely outdated um, and, it, it, and should be shut down or turned into sanctuaries because you can't justify keeping an elephant in a confined space like a zoo no. or a lion, a tiger or a polar bear. If you look at the uh, pictures of some of those animals that look absolutely awful, the polar bear in a concrete cage um, and a lion in, in, in uh, lying asleep in, in, in a, a, another concrete uh, cell. Um, it, it's completely outdated. Uh, it, it's uh, also, I think, so bad for all of the wild species that are kept in captivity. And also, I think we have to remember that um, zoos are there as a fu function for making money and, um, and, and entertaining the public. And I think, as you said, we, we surely have grown up enough as a society to realise that animals and other species on our wonderful planet are not there to entertain us. Yeah, Sp spot on. I, I know that some zoos, I mean, you mentioned uh, sanctuaries and the like, and some have kind of expanded into the sort of the Aspinall stuff where I think in Kent yeah, at Portland and the like, they, you know, this is very much about trying to get animals back into the wild that have, have suffered. So they're on, they're on programmes. They're, they're very different affairs, I guess, to the, the sort of places we're talking about. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Aspinall and, and those kind of sanctuaries, the animals are there, and if they come out when you're visiting, you're lucky enough to see them. They're not yeah. always, you know, present like, you know, like guards at a parade. Where, yes. Yeah, you can't yeah, ask for your money back if you don't see an animal down there. Exactly, at Port absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and we don't need, as I said, we don't, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's much more exciting to see a David Attenborough programme where you see these majestic creatures in their own habitat doing the kind of things mm. that they would never do in a zoo. Yeah. And in a zoo, what you basically see are animals suffering from stereotypic behaviour, yep. pacing, turning. How can, a, how can a magnificent creature like an elephant that would travel 40 miles in a day foraging, yeah. how can it live in a confined space on concrete in a zoo? They have the softest of pads. It's absolutely shocking and completely, completely out of date. I wonder if we'll... I mean, I, th I think... I think I'm right in saying, Peter, that animals in circuses are no longer allowed in this country. That's um, right. I, I think yes. possibly horses are, are, are used, but the, the days of lions and, and, and tigers and elephants are gone. Yeah. Um, and one is forced to wonder that, you know, maybe 20 years' time, I'd like to think next year, but, you know, that zoos will, will, will move in the same direction. They just simply become... I think awesome. eventually people will, with the kind of information we are getting about the needs of wildlife mm. and how important they are to our wonderful planet, I think people will, over the next decade or two, fully understand that, in fact, zoos are not wonderful conservation areas for animals. They're, in fact prisons for animals. Yeah. Um, it, it, it always seems to be bottom of the pecking order when it comes to sort of government business, I, I, I've noticed. And, you know, I yes. sat in the press gallery for a number of years. I don't think I ever saw a debate on, a, a real debate on animal welfare in this respect. Once in a while there's a, you know, a, a, a few crumbs are thrown in the direction of a, an animal rights campaign. But it, it doesn't, and, and yes, of course there are some fundamental issues. You know, we've been talking about the NHS and taxation and all sorts here today. But it's curious that it really it doesn't get a mention even in any other the business it seems well indeed it's very sad and you're quite right i mean i spend my life going to the house of commons for various causes <clears throat> all related to animal rights and animal welfare and they are always very low down on the agenda yeah. and what is surprising is that most mps will say most of the emails they get come from people concerned about animal welfare and we as an animal loving country which i think we are 
between 86 and 90 percent of the population support caring more for animals. Yeah, indeed. Well, on that point, Peter, it's great to speak. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. Peter Egan.